Welcome back to another CBC Doctor Who review. Now we are reviewing Robot of Sherwood. Uh, this is the third episode from Series 8 of Doctor Who. So basically the episode involves the Doctor and uh, Clara go to Sherwood. Uh, the Doctor doesn't believe that Robin Hood is real, but they go anyway, and turns out he is or isn't he. Just right off the bat, we won't give it a number yet, but what did you think of this episode? Um, I thought it was an interesting episode. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I thought the chemistry between Doctor and Robin Hood was very funny. Mm. In the sense, oh, yeah, they were great together. Yeah, and also the, the guy who was playing Robin Hood was really good as well. I felt. Yeah. It was really good. He felt like Robin Hood, and it also it was kind of funny seeing Clara, well, fan go out over Robin Hood. I thought that was quite funny. Yeah, and it's one of those things about meeting your heroes, though, and uh, this is, like, the one hero that actually lives up to it. Like, you obviously, you remember the Shakespeare code where yeah. the Doctor met Shakespeare. He's like, oh, every word out of his mouth is going to be poetic, and, like, the first thing he hears is, shut your big fat mouth. Well, he went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I thought that was very brilliant. I I love the fact that the Doctor got into a sword-slash-spoon fight with, with oh, Robert. Oh, spoon fight. <laughs> that was amazing. I thought I I was cracking up laughing when I saw that, and I thought, wait, it does, and also I love the fact they got the callback to the previous sword fights he had in the show as well, and it, even the Christmas special, David Tennant first appearance. I love that there's they're so, there's like every now and then in Doctor Who you'll just have this amazing sword fight, and this one was just amazing on a comedic scale. It was just so fantastically done. Yeah, it, yeah, I, I love it when they call back to previous things in Doctor Who that have been popular, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was a very good little episode, and it did, did, did well, and also it re-established the whole um, promised land again mm. in this episode, with, with the whole fact that, it was just interesting, the the whole concept of it, because like you said, like, the Doctor and Billy, Robin Hood was real, but it's actually, he was real, but he was just a forgotten, real-life person who was made into, made to believe, he was a legend. Yeah, best way to put it, and I like the fact the final conversation between Robin Hood and the Doctor was basically summing up um, Robin Hood summing up the Doctor very cleverly by talking yeah. about himself, like saying that basically, well, so people don't remember me. No, you're um, you're forgotten. It went, oh, that's probably the best then because it's like a legend, a story almost like yeah. you. And and she, he said, oh, you're from Gallifrey and everything, like that. and Doctor like got got a bit angry saying. Yeah, I'm no very surprised in Clara for revealing that information. But the thing is, we never really saw her do that. So yeah. what if Robin knows something more than he's letting on? He's just sort of saying Clara told him. Yeah. I'm and wondering if that's going to come back later. Yeah, and it was just like one of those things that... I think they did it in the sense that to sum up that basically saying that we are legends and we are heroes in our own right. People will remember us as a story, and essentially what the Doctor is basically at one point um, during Rusty Dover and early Stephen Moffat run, that was the Doctor was he was, yeah. and even the classic run, he was like he's like the ongoing legend, the Doctor, yeah, through space and Woven time throughout history, yeah, yeah, which I think it was it was a nice little touch I felt that idea of the Doctor obviously becoming a story woven throughout history. I I really liked that bit in David Tennant's last episode where um, Wilfred is in the church and there's that stained glass window of the TARDIS. Yeah, I thought that was a nice little little things like that are just amazing touches and it, it's really nice to have a callback to that sort of storybook element because towards the end of Matt Smith's era they started to lose the fairy tale a tiny bit. Yeah, like, that was mostly yeah. the early Smith stuff. Yeah, and, and uh, even though we've got a darker Doctor, I like that the fairy tale element is still yeah. hinted on every now and then. I just love the fact that the Doctor is completely mon- uh, was like completely mundane and was just like annoyed with what, what everything was going on, and eventually he finally was happy when he noticed the knights were robots. Yeah, that made <laughs> me laugh. A bit. Oh, robots! Finally, something interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that, that made me laugh. That, that put, a, put a smile on my face. And that was during the uh, the archery contest scene, which I thought was really cool. I mean. If, if you're going to do Robin Hood, you have to have the archery contest. Yeah, it's like they picked up the key main points in Robin Hood's Miss Office, that being um, they had the archery competition with the golden bow being being one of the big ones. You had the um, Sharon Nottingham, Nottingham mm. taking all the gold and everything like that. And you had the Fair Maiden was mentioned as well. I forgot her name at the moment. Robin May Marion? Yeah, May Marion was mentioned and everything like that. And it was just, it was just done really well. And I, I don't know, it just... Something with the Doctor and Robin Hood just made me laugh. With it's, it sort of reminded me of um, Captain Jack with the Doctor a little bit. Yeah, definitely. There's yeah. there's a sort of smug arrogance that's there with uh, Robin and Captain Jack. 
Yeah. And uh, it's definitely an interesting parallel as well, because obviously with Capaldi being darker than definitely Tennant and Smith, yeah. uh, it's, it reveals that sort of dynamic that Eccleston had with um, John Barrowman. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's that sort of dynamic that I really like. And the guy, um, Tom Riley, I think his name That's, was? Yeah, yeah. He, he plays um, Leonardo da Vinci in uh, Da Vinci's Demons at the moment. I thought I recognised him, okay. Yeah. He, he was a really good. He was a really good actor. I, he, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed with his work. I'm looking forward to seeing what else he does. Yeah. Um, I think the only gripes I got about this episode is that his merry men really didn't do anything. Yeah, they were kind of pointless. Yeah, they were just there to just be to be the reference to. Um, there was one funny joke with the um, guy oh, always. Little played, John, you mean? Um, not little John, but the oh. guy always played the um, guitar. Oh, instrument. the lute. Yeah. The, he, uh, he went, what's, he, his, what's it called? And the bard. Yeah, the bard. He's like, oh, we'd be, be depressed, depressed, and poverty, and everything like that. He's like, yeah, you only got six months month of that because you're dying from a disease. Yeah. And the doctor just bloody keeps saying that to him through the whole time episode. I thought that was yeah. really funny. It was, yeah, it was proper funny to see like, oh, the first time he brings it up, he says, this can't be right. If you were real, it, you would be dead in six months. He's like, I am real. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like the doctor inspecting all, all of his men and stuff like that, like stealing, stealing hair sample, taking blood sample, stealing their clothes and everything, like, examining yeah. them. I thought, I, that, that, that's sandals. Yes, yeah. they are. So they are. Yeah. <laughs> it, it reminded me of the doctor's quirkiness a little bit. He does stuff like that previously. I, I like that this version of the doctor still got that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's nice to see the playfulness as he's trying to investigate something has remained. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people were worried that Capaldi was going to make it too grown up. Yeah. But no, he's he's still um, he he acts very childish actually in this episode, especially during the like the squabbling in the prison. Yeah, well, that was brilliant. I thought that the whole jail sequence was so funny with them in prison and everything like that. Mm. And he was very sarky to Robin Hood as well, and like Robin Hood was giving back to him as well. Yeah, but they were arguing like a couple of children, really. Oh yeah, they were. And uh, it, it, I've watched it twice now, and um, I think the second time when I watched it, knowing that Clara was going to be the one taken away. Yeah. No, like, as I watched it with the second perspective, I was like, of course she gets the one get taken away. She's sitting there in silence while the other two are squabbling like kids. Of course she's yeah. probably the leader. I, it, <laughs> it made me laugh because she was just like, um, she was acting like a teacher. Well, it was funny enough, she is a teacher. She was like, yeah. a teacher. now behave you two. Yeah. Oh, talking of the teacher thing, where she gets the sheriff to reveal his plan and like, everything oh, that's happened. Clever. That's she's basically clever. using the classroom tactic that teachers use to get kids to give up what other kids have done kind of thing. Yeah. It's like people, yeah, they're going to share information if you think you've already known the story. It's like when a teacher comes in and goes, well, yeah, well, so-and-so has told me the whole story. Now, if you collaborate and you both have the same stories, you'll get away with it kind of thing. Yeah. I and it's w- like, he, nobody's told them the story. They just want you to say it. Yeah. <laughs> it was, that was done really well. I thought Ben Miller, as the show off him, did a good job. It was very, a very villainish sort of look to him. And also, even the sword fight between him and Robin Hood towards the end was very good. And I liked the fact that the first fight they, um, the Doctor had with Robin Hood, the, the, well, the sword spoon fight, the Doctor used a clever technique he used against Robin Hood to push him off the bridge. And then Robin Hood reuses it again on, on um, the show in Offendom. Yeah, I thought that was great that Robin Hood's learning a trick from the Doctor. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was done really well. I thought the villains, um, showing off him was good, but I thought, the robots were lacking as well. They're just like... Yeah, they were kind of just there, really. Yeah. They didn't do a lot. They were very generic. Yeah. I liked their design, but they, they didn't really do much. Yeah. Well, May Merton did, did turn up at the end. I'll say that much, because she was one Yeah, that was the Doctor's like... gift to Robin Hood. Yeah. Like, he bought her there for him. Yeah. <coughs> I, I just thought, overall, um, this episode was very enjoyable. Um, I really have little minor gripes with it. That's the only thing. Oh, I've got a, I've got a gripe with one thing. Oh, what's that? The uh, you know the riot scene where all the um, sort of well, lack of a better word, the slaves start fighting back against the robots with mirrors. Yeah. After the first robot shot and like it reflected off a mirror and killed him, surely the robots would have just like changed their tactics, stopped firing, and just used their considerable strength to rip them apart. Yeah, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. I think these robots were a bit dumb to be honest. I think they were made writers say made them dumb you know yeah. like they only had it would one. be nice if they'd like been a bit more of a threat like you know the Cybermen wouldn't have done you couldn't beat a Cyberman like no that. a Cyberman would just, just immediately just... after the first one goes down they'd be like right up, uh, like upgrading tactics and suddenly it's like right let's just shoot them with bullets instead yeah <laughs> or find another way to kill them <laughs> yeah strangle them to death instead like yeah. they're, they're holding mirrors they're not much of a threat to us <laughs> 
Yeah, because the guy who wrote this, uh, Mark Gatz? Gatz? Gatz, yeah. Yeah, Gatz. Um, he's a Sherlock writer, isn't he? Yeah, he also wrote um, Churchill and the Daleks. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, but he's he's been in the show a couple of times. He was the Viking that Matt Smith's Doctor plays chess against in uh, Good Man Goes to War. Oh, okay. Or was it the next one? Was it Good Man Goes? It was one of them in that series. He's sort of the Viking that leads. No, it was um, the last one of the series, Wedding Us River Song. Oh, okay, fair enough. But, uh, yeah, he was also in the the Lazarus Code. He's the guy that he's the old man that wants to become immortal, so he gets young and then turns into a giant scorpion. Oh, fair enough. Martha, Martha Jones episode. <laughs> yeah. I thought the writing was good, the acting was good. I, I just think the minor roles were, were the letdown in this episode, to be honest. Yeah. At first, I quite liked the, um, when it was first introduced, their joke with uh, Little John, where uh, she, he's like, oh, this is Little John, it's like that great big bloke. And then the midget, though, jumps out from between his legs or something, and yeah. he's just like, ha ha, I tricked ya. Yeah. I, I quite liked that, thinking, oh, that's a nice sort of spin on it. But then he's never seen again, really. Like not like he's just in the background and stuff. Like I thought there was Little John's usually like Robin Hood's second in command. Like I I was looking forward to a fun adventure with a dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, you know, <laughs> they just didn't do anything with them. That was the disappointing thing about them. Yeah, um, like, so many interesting yeah. ways the characters could have gone. Yeah, they, I I like the bit when they're in the spaceship and everything like that, and um, they realise that there's eight the aliens and. Everything that the Doctor said previously in the episode or anyone point out that is a bit strange, it does get wrapped up in that sort of thing. And I do like the fact that the Robin Hood's like saying, no, I am real, or anything like that. They say, but why are these aliens know me, and everything like that. And the Doctor constantly thinks it's a robot. And when he finally realises it's not a robot, he realises how, how much of an idiot, he's been an idiot realising, wait, 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 what? Yeah, he's just like, wait, he is real? Yeah. <laughs> just like, stupid, of course that's a bad idea, why did I even think of that? Yeah, it's just like... It, it goes back to the Doctor arrogance that sometimes he just does not want to believe in something because it's not historical right or he feels that it's not should it be there. It blinds yeah. his own judgment, but when he finally does come to terms with it, it's nice to see that he he does become accept, accepting of it. It's happened a few times in the show now. I know this. Oh, it's, it's, it's probably has has happened a few times and probably will happen a bunch more. Yeah. But, um... I, I, one thing that made me laugh was the final bit when the rocket goes up in the air and they're yeah. trying to aim the gold arrow and they said, no, um, Doctor, you shoot it. You're, you're very good, aren't you? So I no, cheated. <laughs> I cheated. I rigged all the arrows. <laughs> they had a homing device. I could have shot it into the sun and it would have hit. Yeah, I, or something I, like that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. <laughs> of course like, the Doctor cheated. He always cheats. But, um, <laughs> but uh, there was a couple more things. Like, did you? I mean, a lot of people before it came out from set photos were saying how much Ben Miller look as a uh, sheriff of Nottingham looks like the master. He does, yes. He's I, got the exact beard. Yes, he does. I I don't know if that's like a little. That was a coincidence. I think it was just a coincidence. I think he, maybe, but the moment he was seen on set, people were like, "He looks like the master. He looks like the master." They yeah. must have noticed it on set. I can imagine. How would they not? <laughs> I can imagine they probably gave him the beard and everything, like that, and suddenly when they got finally got him on set, they were like, "Yeah, people are going to say he looks like the master, isn't he?" <laughs> yeah, he would make a good master, actually. I wouldn't mind that. He's, he was pretty. He was. He was good. He was menacing. Uh, before we give it our scores out of ten, uh, there's one other thing I just want to bring up about this episode, um, and that's the cut scenes. Okay. Okay, go go on. Well, not cut scenes. It was a cut scene. But um, during the sword fight with Robin Hood, the sheriff in the original cut actually gets his head cut off oh. and reveals that he's a robot. And you see his head on the floor talking. Oh, wow. Obviously, that was cut from this, and you don't really know that he's a robot, really. Oh. Apparently, that was removed because of the whole beheading thing in the news. Oh, okay. I, oh, yeah, because for those who don't know, they recently... We're in North London. Some at the time of this recording, um, in the news that someone got beheaded and someone found it in the garden. Um, that what happened. That's the reason why it got cut. Plus, there was the um, the US news reporter that got beheaded on the like on live video as well recently. That was in the news. Yeah, that's prob- probably a wise decision to get rid of those scenes. Then it just thing it- is, I think it I think it made the episode slightly worse for me. I get, I those, those were pretty why. good scenes, and I really like to reveal that the yeah. sheriff was a robot, and we didn't get that in any way. I, I thought it was a little bit really creepy. About it, but you know. I think it was a little bit more creepy, the fact that he, you never knew he was a robot, and he fell into liquid gold, and he was just, he was just crystallising the gold. I, I thought it was a more Chrissy thing, but what do you thought the teaser trailer afterwards? Listen. I liked it. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I've got some ideas on that episode anyway. 
yeah. that I'll, I'll look forward to discussing when we do the review for it anyway. But, um, okay. yeah, I, I think it's going to be a strong episode. Yeah. But, yeah, um, what about the rating for this episode, then? What, what do you think? I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Give it a 7 out of 10? I'd probably give it a 7.5. You liked this one a bit more than I did. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know why. I just I I, I, I I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun, but yeah. I can't really give it above a seven because I didn't think it was anything special. So sort of, um, I just really liked the chemistry between um, between Tom Riley and uh, Peter Capaldi in this episode. And That's why it's not a six point five for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and also I just uh, I don't know. I, I, I like that they developed the character of Clara again. I I, I don't know. I, I just like the development in this episode. It's just it's just some minor stuff that that needed to be worked on. And it could have made it a better. Well, thank you guys for listening, and uh, make sure you tune in next week, and uh, yeah, we'll review the next episode. Cheers. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Joel here reminding you that this video was made possible thanks to our many great patrons. If you want to become a patron and get exclusive comic book cast content, then click the Patreon link below and see how you can help us bring you the content you've come to love. Every little bit helps, and thanks for listening.